how can you make your videos sound better? In this video, I'll show you some of the mics I'm using in my studio, plus tiny mics you can put on top of your camera to make your vlogs and YouTube videos sound better. Plus stick around at the end, I'll give you some post-processing tips to make your audio pop out of the speakers. Okay, so usually when I'm doing a video, I will use my large diaphragm condenser microphone, which is fine, it works well, it's studio quality. In fact, it's probably the best quality you can get for a YouTube video. The only issue with having a condenser microphone is you need to be super close to it, you need to speak into it. This is a really good one, by the way. It's the AKG C414 XL2, which I absolutely love. Comes in at around $999. So it's not cheap, but it sounds fantastic. Obviously, you've got a big microphone sticking in front of your face, which can be an issue when recording YouTube videos, even if it is gold on the front. Uh, it's not always the best thing to have in front of you. That's why there are other options. Uh, you have got, for vlogging, uh, you could use this. It's a Rode Video Micro, which is a tiny microphone. This is super cheap. Usually it's in at about $49. And uh, you just stick it on top of your camera, plug it into the 3.5 jack on the side of your camera, and away you go. You're recording good quality audio. In fact, if I pull off this uh, cat sock here, which protects against wind rumble, I will eventually get the mic out, although I've stuck it on really well. There we go. It just looks like that. So it's a tiny microphone. It's very directional. So wherever the microphone is pointing, it will pick up your audio. And if it's pointing away from you, obviously it won't pick up the audio, but it's tiny, it's well priced and uh, it's decent. So let me put it back together and show you. So cat sock goes over to block out the wind. Now you really have to pull this thing on with the Rode Video Micro. Uh, and you'll know you have it on properly because once you've got it on, if you try to pull it off, it'll be really tough to do it. If you pull the sock and it just kind of falls off, you know it's not on properly. So that's a tip if using the Rode Video Micro. Plug one end of the cable in there like that, then get it inside this shock mount, which will obviously go on top of your vlogging camera. And another little tip with the Video Micro is make sure the cable is going into one of these slots here once you've got it screwed on the top of your camera. And the reason for this if you don't have that, the mic will bob around like that as you're vlogging, and that's not very good uh, for the direction of your microphone. So if you have it plugged into one of these slots as you go around, that thing should stay pretty much solid on top of your camera. So a very cheap budget option to do your vlogging. Something that I used at the start of this video was the, uh, and let me go and grab the box for it, the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. Uh, obviously, as you can see, I've already unboxed it, but it's fantastic, uh, really good in so many cases. You have the option uh, to change some of the EQ on the microphone. You can boost or reduce the volume from the microphone, which is great. And one of my favorite features is the microphone powers down with the camera. So obviously you've got a long lasting battery, 100 to 150 hours of recording time before you need to recharge. Uh, this is really a fantastic choice and something I'd recommend if you're taking vlogging seriously. The Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, absolutely fantastic. I've enjoyed playing with it. As you can see at the start of this video, it's perfectly ample for good quality audio. We'll take a look at some post-processing techniques a little bit later on. And now I'll push the condenser microphone out of the way. <sighs> and I've seemingly got no microphone in front of me. So how am I doing this? How am I speaking to you with great quality audio, yet there's no microphone visibly in front of me? I haven't got any of these microphones in front of me. I've not got a lapel attached to me. I really don't like lapels unless you absolutely have to use them because they're visible and the audio quality isn't that great. But now you're hearing good quality audio. You're seeing my face. I'm not obstructed by a microphone. And yes, I know my channel is primarily audio, so it's kind of okay to have a microphone. But if you're making YouTube videos and you don't want a huge microphone in front of you or something attached to your clothing, uh, then a shotgun, yes, a shotgun microphone is the way to go. And this is what a shotgun microphone looks like. Careful, you might want to back up a little bit. Whoa. So you've just seen and you're also hearing the Rode NTG4 Plus. This is the Rode NTG4 Plus. As you can see, Rode are making great microphones for video producers, for YouTube creators. This is really great. Uh, so the noise is uh, just very, very silent on this. It's very good. Again, you've got lots of filters on here, high pass, high frequency boost. Uh, you've got padding of volume, so you can do the, uh, the 10 dB reduction. It's also got a 150 hour lithium battery inside. I kind of 
wondered when I purchased this as a four and a four plus, I wondered what the plus meant. And then when I switched off all the power in my studio, I realized that the mic was still on. That's because there's a lithium battery on the plus version powering it. Uh, you can charge it via micro USB cable. It comes with a road 10 year warranty as well. So really good stuff. And I think more and more as I start doing more vlog style videos, more videos that can help you out, I don't really want a big microphone in front of me. I want to be more natural. I want to talk to you and not to a microphone. So that's why I'm going to be using a shotgun microphone a lot more in the future. So it's more natural. You and I can have a conversation and let me know what you think about all of these different options. One thing I will say with the shotgun is it's very directional. So right now I'm talking into the shotgun. I'm about a hand span away, just over a hand span away from the microphone off the top of the camera. If I turn to the left, you'll hear I'll disappear. So now I'm talking over here and it's not so apparent that I'm talking to a microphone. Again, if I turn to the right off axis again, it's really difficult to hear me over here as well, although you'll probably pick something up, but it's not as good as when I'm talking straight on. And as I get closer to the microphone, you'll hear that very directional sound and further away like that, probably a little more echo. So the sweet spot is to be just over a hand span away from it. Let me know how you are recording audio for your YouTube videos. Are you just going with something really tiny mounted on top of your camera? Are you going for something more professional? Are you using shotgun microphones, dynamic microphones, condenser microphones? nor something completely different. Maybe you're just using the internal mic on your camera. I'd love to know down in the comments. So let's have a conversation. So remember, if you like this video, subscribe, like, and stick around for more videos just like this one. Uh, so that's why I'm going to be using a lot of shotgun, sh shotgun. It just looks like that. Whoa. <laughs> All right, thanks for sticking around for the bonus part of this video. I will show you how to make any audio for your YouTube videos or vlogs sound better in post using Adobe Premiere Pro. And when I'm in the software, I'm going to go over to the audio layout here so I can focus on the mixing desk. If you don't have this gray area up here popped out, you just need to click this triangle here. See, pop, and then it will pop out uh, your effects rack and everything else that you might want to add to sweeten up this audio. If I want to see the waveform better, I can actually click and drag down so I can really see that audio. This is from the start of the video you've just watched and it's recorded on the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. And I'll give you some post-processing tips. Okay, so you can see it sounds all right. It's a bit quiet though, peaking up at minus 15. So first thing I'm gonna do is go in and amplify that using the amplify effect, double click it, and I'll give it a 10 dB boost. Let's try that out. Audio pop out of the speakers. Okay, that's sounding a lot better. Next thing I would do is go into the effects and I'd pull in filter and EQ, a bit of parametric equalizer. And this is where I can do some really cool stuff. So with a flat line, first of all, HP, high pass filter, make that a little more aggressive. So we've got a short, sharp line, changing the gain there and pulling this up until we hear it kicking in. Let's play back from the start again. How can you make your video sound better? In this video, I'll show you some of the mic. So setting that around 100 hertz so that we knock off any bass rumble or anything that we don't need. Next, adding on some high end, changing the shape of that for crispness and clarity. So I'm using in my studio, plus tiny mics you can put on top of your camera. And then notching as well, using these notches to bring in or out frequencies. I won't go into detail on this, uh, but in future videos, I will show you how to notch frequencies and make things sound even better. But finally, as this is a quick tutorial, I'll go in and I'll find amplitude and compression. I'll find the dynamics effect. I'll get rid of these windows and then I'll double click to open this up, switch on the compressor, minus 20 threshold is okay with a nice loud piece of audio recorded there. So I'm going to bring the ratio up to about two to one. You'll see the compression kicking in to make your vlogs and you maybe a bit more YouTube videos sound better. Okay. That is starting to push down some of the louder parts of my speech so that everything sounds uniform and nice and loud. Next, stick on a limiter so that audio is not going above minus one dB. You'll never see it go above minus one. And as I turn up the gain on this audio, watch as the limiter kicks in. Plus stick around at the end, I'll give you some post-processing tips to make your audio. Okay, now you can see the limiter is stopping this going above minus one on the meters. I don't want to be riding up that high though. Let's pull it audio down. Audio pop out. Let's go back to the beginning. In this video, I'll show you some of the mics I'm using in my studio. Plus time. Okay, so I'm just tickling the limiter there with a 10 dB boost after compression. So that's pretty much a good spot to be. You don't want to be using the limiter all the time, but just occasionally to stop any rogue peaks. And there you have some pretty good audio. <laughs>